Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on assembling Space Hun's Hackheld Vega 2 kit with the battery add-on. So I made my own case for this to hold a little bit bigger battery. Basically, if we look under the attack menu, we have Deauth Beacon and Probe. This is the original Deauther. It also has a packet monitor built in so you can see how much Wi-Fi traffic is on each of the Wi-Fi channels. Basically, this thing is the OG. It predates the ESP32 Marauder. It predates the Flipper. I mean, it predates the ESP32. This is built on an ESP8266. So Space Hunt recommends a 400 to 600 milliamp hour battery. I put a 2100 milliamp hour battery inside of this case. That means I can sling a lot of deauth packets before I'm going to have to charge this thing again with USB-C charging. So this runs on Space Hunt's Deauther firmware. It's the same firmware that runs on the D-Stike Deauther wristwatch. And I picked this up at spacehunt.store. So I paid 39 euro for the Hackheld Vega 2 kit, another 11 euro for the battery add-on. So let's take a look at what's inside. Okay, so this is what comes in the kit. It is based on the Lowland D1 mini board. That's the heart of the operation. We're gonna solder it all to the PCB from Space Hunt. It comes with the buttons and LED, the screen all that stuff we got to solder together. This is the battery add-on. It comes with the charging circuit and a little wire to install it along with the new back plate that'll hold a little LiPo battery. Instead of using either of these two cases, I'm gonna use the case that I built with some M2 inserts and some M2 by eight screws. And I'm also gonna add this battery, which is the 804050, it's a 2100 milliamp hour battery. So let's get set up to start soldering. All right, we're gonna start by taking the D1 Mini and we're gonna stick the header pins into it. And then we'll marry that up to the PCB where it's supposed to go. And now I'll just set this down and it's gonna suspend the D1 Mini up in the air there. I'm gonna solder on those two pins. Now we'll just examine the board and make sure that the pins are all lined up and flush. Looks like we did a pretty good job there. If you need to straighten these up, you can heat up that pin and push them into place. But it looks like everything's good, so we'll stick it back in the board here. We'll flip it over, and now we'll solder in these back too. Now we'll examine it, and we can see it's all nice and lined up, nice and flush on there. So we'll go ahead and solder up the tops and the bottoms. All right, next I'm gonna use a pair of snips to trip around the top and the bottoms of the pins. The next step is to install the 10K resistor up here where we have the marking for the 10K. Next I'm gonna solder on the NeoPixel LED. It's gonna to go to these four pads here. So I'll start by tinning those and then I'll tin the four leads on the bottom of the LED. There's a marked corner that's got white on it, and that's going to go down to the bottom right. So I'll set it on there and heat it on until it bonds. Okay, the next step is to press the six buttons into place. They're longer than they are wide, so they should only fit one way. All right, now with all of our buttons pushed in up against the board flush, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna solder all those pins in. Next, we're gonna plug in the display and I'm gonna use the piece of double-sided sticky tape and I'm gonna stick it between the two sets of wires here. And then I'll peel it back. I'm gonna take these plastic guards off the pins. So I'm gonna use snips and snip them all loose and then pull them off. Now I'll plug the display in. And now we'll solder those four pins on. And now I'll use snips and chop those pins down. Okay, at this point we can apply USB-C power to the hack held and it turns on. The LED is lit up. You probably can't see it with all the light, but it is lit up. And our buttons appear to work. The packet monitor shows traffic. So we seem to be doing good. Next we'll get the battery circuit plugged in. On the battery circuit here, there's this little pad for five volt and this wire that it came with. I'm gonna run the wire through the hole from the top, flip it over, bend that wire over, and I'll solder it on from the bottom. Now I'll line up the power circuit where it's supposed to go on the board here. This little piece that says ground is going to go to the second pin there at the top, the ground pin, and I'll solder that into place right there. 
All right, now we'll wrap this up by routing this wire around and we'll solder it to that first pin there right on the end. All right, with our battery circuit all attached, we're ready to plug in our battery. The first thing we're gonna do is validate the polarity. So the plug is keyed, it only plugs in one way and it plugs in this way. We're gonna notice red aligns to the positive on the left, black aligns to the negative on the right. So we are good to plug this in. And then we'll flip this switch and now we can see we're running on battery power. So let's jump over to getting the case prepared. All right, so I started the case by burning the four M2 inserts into the four corners with my dedicated insert burning soldering iron. And now I'll take our assembled hack held and I will insert the battery so that the wires are up with the hole in the top. Push it all the way down in there and then we'll slam the hack held on top. We'll put the top cover on. I'm gonna take the screen protector off first. We'll put the top cover on, and I'll drive all four of the M2 by eight screws into the corners. Now we should be able to flip the switch on top, and at this point we have a battery powered hack held. We are ready to get out there and start deauthing clients. So as always, stay tuned, and thanks for watching.